So let's take a look at another example. Um, we'll just look at question 42 out of your workbook. So here we're being told we're going from A to F. So we've got our start and our finish. And I'm going to try and use uh, Dijkstra's method to try to figure out what the minimum distance is between those. So taking a look at this, um, I can go up C to 9, over B to 8, and over E at 7. So we'll just try that one out, E, 7. And from E, obviously, getting here is going to be to um, E, 7 plus 4 is 11. So that looks pretty good, but I want you to keep in mind, it's not always visually the shortest path or the one with the least number of nodes. Sometimes you go on a really obscure looking path, but you actually end up covering a lot less distance because it's obviously not drawn to scale. So just to double check these, if I go from E up to D, that's a distance of 8. So that would be E... Sorry, I wrote that wrong. That should be A7 because I came from seven A. And then here, coming from E, 7 plus 8 is 15, and I can see from A, or sorry, from E, E15 is much longer than E11, so I'll cross it out because comparing the two, E11 is obviously shorter than E15 at the same, from that same point. Um, but let's take a look at another one. So from A to B is going to be A8, and then from B to F, we could go a distance here of 9. So from B to F is going to be 17, and you can see that 17 is longer than 11. And just looking around this diagram too, if I were to go from B to D down to F, that's 5 plus 7 is 12, so 8 plus 12 would be even longer. I know that's not going to work. And going this way as well, from A to C to D, I can see that I get a total distance of 15, so that's A9 and then C15, which is the same as E15, similar. So I'd cross that one out as well. So my shortest path here is going to be from A to E to F at 11 kilometers. Now trying to write about this, you would want to try to put down a little bit of information. You could put in words like, um, I initially tried to go from A to E and found that from E to F was a total distance of 11. Just to double check myself, I tried going from E to D and found that that was even longer at 15. So I decided that was not the best possible path to take because I still had another 7 to get back to F. Um, just to double check, I looked going from A to B and found that that was 9 kilometers to get to F, which was um, at 17 total, which is still more than the 11 that I tried originally. And again, just to double check, I tried from A to C to D and found that that was also 15 kilometers to that point. So obviously the initial path that I tried from A to E to F was the shortest one possible. So you can put that into words if you're in the exam to try to think about it, and it's good to maybe start practicing that. We'll take a look at one more example. If you would like, I can recommend you try it on your own first, but see how you go. So for the graph below, find the shortest path from A to I. Um, so from A is my start, and I is my end. So one thing that can be a tip for you is you can always try working backwards the diagram as well. Um, and that's sometimes a nice trick. Um, so if you wanted to do, we could work backwards just trying to find the path. And it's helpful sometimes to just take a look at that diagram first and see if you can kind of notice where really short paths are. Um, going around the edges here, I've got ones and twos and threes. Those are pretty short. Um, so. Let's just give a play, see what happens. So from A to C E, so coming from A, I go a distance of 2. Coming from A, I go a distance of 4. If I go to F, so I'm going to try the other one because it's shorter to start with. Because the difference between obviously 2 and 4. So, so far this one's shorter. So from C, I'm going to go to D. So coming from C, I've now gone a total distance of 5. And then here from D, I'm going to have gone a distance of 9. Okay, so that's one possibility. Let's just double check this. If I come back to A, or come back to C, if I go from C over to E, that's C8, and I can see that that's longer than the C5 option that I had earlier, so I'll cross that one off. And 
just checking some of these other possibilities. If I go from A to F and then from F to G, I've got F at 5 kilometers. And then from G to H, that's another 2. So that's G at a total of 7. Sorry, G at a total of 7 kilometers. And then here from H to I, 7 plus 3 is 10. So you can see that the other one was a little bit quicker. And just checking through here as well, if I go from F to E, that's the total distance of F at 9. And just to double check that it doesn't balance out for ourselves, from E here that would be a total of 11. So that's also longer. Um, any other possibilities? So if I go 7 plus 2, I get 9. That's already too long. And that appears to be the quickest way there, because I already saw going this direction was bigger than that one. So you've got your shortest path, path possible. You would say A, C, D, I at a total distance of 9 kilometers. And again, pretty much everything that I said while I was trying to figure that out, you would try to draw it down for yourself. Like, I tried this path, but it was two, s two kilometers longer, and I tried this one, and it was a little bit longer as well. And then I noticed that there was a shorter path because this distance was really short. Um, so just trying to put that down into words for yourself, the thought process that you are doing when you work your way through these problems.